Hey, it's me, Fresman. Welcome to. I haven't totally figured out the name yet, but hey, I'm here with <laughs> Matt the Brawler. How's 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 going, Champ? Chief? <laughs> Is Champ there? Is Champ, Champ there? Who's Champ? <laughs> Well, I'm not John Cena, so I don't know. I can't imagine what an interview with him must be like. It must be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, he could break your skull if you wanted to. <laughs> Crush men's skull like th sparrow eggs between thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, so what, what was the topic you were wanting to discuss? Bay Beyblades? Yes, Beyblades. Um, I've been getting into Beyblades lately, and I know it's silly, but it's fucking interesting, too. Mm -hmm. It's how the toys work, because for the uninitiated, which I assume everyone knows what Beyblades are, but they don't really know the details. Yeah. For the uninitiated, the Beyblades are um, tops that battle, basically, in a special stadium made for them. Like, the the stadium, like, the the bottom of it is concave, and it has, like, a ring around it, so they, they, they can jump out of the stadium, but it's, like, harder for them to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, that's what a lot of people do know. What a lot of people don't know is that, well, first of all, uh, they are made of three parts. Like, at least, at least, um... Burst, the newest generation, is made of three parts. Mm -hmm. So there's the energy layer, the forge disc, and depending if you're using Japanese or American Beyblades, which is something we'll get to, uh, there's another bit called the performance tip in America, or the driver in Japan. Yeah. And if you have any questions, Fresman, feel free to ask, because, you know. Mm. And, uh, basically what, what, what each layer has kind of its own purpose. The energy layer is basically what attacks. So, like, the shape of it very much impacts, like, what kind of Beyblade it is. There are stamina Beyblades, there are attack types, there are defense types, there's this, there's that, you know. And, um, the forged disc is, like, the weight of it. Like, how it, the weight is distributed on the Beyblade. Huh. Like there, like there's one bay where um, the weight is. If you look at, I think I sent you it. Yeah, yeah, acid Anubis. Mm -hmm. It you can't see it in that picture I sent you, but the forged disc of that one is a star actually. Nice. Like it, it's it's a it's a ring around a five point star. And as you imagine, that really changes how the weight is done. You know. Yeah. And uh, the bottom layer, which is the performance tip in America, the driver in Japan, uh, is basically like controls how the bay spins. Mm hmm. Like in America, I think there are only a few types of uh, performance tips and they don't really vary much. But the Japanese ones, there are like crazy types of performance tips that have like weird designs to them and. Like, there's one called Orbit that literally just has a plastic BB in it mm -hmm. to, like, spin on. Mm -hmm. So it slides around a lot more, and they're, like, they have, like, these weird complicated designs, and they're somewhat transparent, so you can see them on the inside, and I like that. it's all very interesting. Yeah. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah, it is really interesting, honestly. And the cool thing about the new generation of Beyblade is that if you, if, uh, with the American ones, it's much easier for them to do this because they don't have notches in them. Mm -hmm. But uh, they do what's called bursting, which is, hold on, that didn't come across as well as I hoped it would. <laughs> yeah, they burst, which means uh, basically when they, when they smack against each other enough the energy layer will get loose and if it gets loose and completely loose the driver is spring loaded so the energy layer and the and the driver like just pop apart and the forge disc goes everywhere and it's really cool and kind of messy mm. this is a messy and confusing toy <laughs> i like it <laughs> <laughs> 
it spins really fast and then it gets everywhere. I love it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, Takara Tomi, the company that makes it in Japan, they have like really weird launchers too. Like, have I shown you some of these? Uh, you've shown me a couple of videos of them where they're just like huge. Like, I think I saw was the Excalibur one? Yes, the digital sword. Yeah. Yeah, okay, for the for those who don't know, the the launchers are very different. You have a few kinds of launcher. You have the light launcher, which is it's basically what we're familiar with over here. It's a little thing with a rip cord that you pull. Mm -hmm. You have a uh, you have a string launcher, which is you know it's like the step up. Basically, it, it gives you a lot more power, but it's a little harder to hold, but you can attach stuff to it to make it easier to hold and weight it down, stuff like that. String launchers are very much your all-purpose stuff. Yeah. And uh, the way those work is when you pull the string, it spins the mechanism, and uh, the mechanism is spring-loaded, so it retracts the string when you're done. So you don't have to go like winding it back up like you would with a ripcord launcher. I should point out one weird difference between the American and the Japanese launchers mm. are that um, the Hasbro launchers, which are the American launchers, they they free spin after you pull them. Mm -hmm. But the I don't know if you heard that. But the uh, Japanese ones they stop spinning as soon as you 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 uh, as soon as the bay comes off the launcher. Yeah. Well, was that the, kind of like the rattling that I heard after you pulled it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the thing just free spinning. Perfect. <laughs> really? Another weird thing about the American launchers is you, you can snap them together, so you can make like double launchers, triple launchers. It's weird. That's terrifying. It is a little terrifying, isn't it? Kind of kind of spooky. Spooky. It's spooky. It was pretty spooky. Like, I usually have, like, one launcher stacked on top of another so I can just pull out uh, one ripcord and then the other ripcord really fast because I don't have anyone to, like, battle with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's still kind of a fair fight. Burst! Burst! <laughs> Burst! Swag! Right. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what's that? No, you, you go. I was actually going to ask you if you had any questions. I don't know why... But I'm like, like I'm remembering the Beyblade TV show where they show the really up close shots of it, like flying around the arena. Yeah. But then somehow that and translated into my mind, like, remember that Yu-Gi-Oh TV show where they're like on motorcycles? Yes, five Bs. I just, what the hell, man? <laughs> Toy anime gets weird, but um. Yeah. Also, certain Beyblades have what's called a god chip in them, which just, like, weighs them down more on the energy layer, and I think it I think it impacts something on the energy layer. I forget what they do exactly, but, yeah. Power of the god hand. <laughs> <coughs> Both versions. Yes. I, I need to start watching Berserk again. Because mm. I've, I've fallen way behind on that. What is that? I don't know what Berserk is. Berserk is, like, a really... Not super gross, but, like, a very action-oriented show. It's, um, about a, a fella named Guts. <laughs> and what I find is, like... What I find funny is that the creator of Berserk, oh shit, I can't remember his name, but he, he, uh, he's like, yeah, th like, people try to translate Guts into English, like, the name Guts into, like, Japanese and back to English, so it comes out as Gatsu. It's like, but that's... Uh, Kentaro Mi Miura. Nice. But... That's his name, sorry. Oh, that's alright. <clears throat> but, um... 
he uh, he's like, just don't. It's not. It's not Gatsu. It's guts. That's the thing. That's his name. Mm-hmm. And I, I really like that show because I, I'm all for a good revenge story. Mm-hmm. Like, it has to be justified, and I've yet to see a revenge story that's more justified than, than huh. Guts' revenge arc. Which, if, really? which, to my knowledge, is still ongoing. Really? Well, because I think it was either the comics, not comics, the manga, or the the show. Either I, there's a joke in the the whole fandom where it's like, you know, oh, he got on a boat, and then that's where kind of the series left off. Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's where the show left off. And he gets on a boat, and so the joke is he's still on the boat. <laughs> like, it's been years and he's still on the boat and like I I I adore ridiculous weaponry in shows mm-hmm. and his might be one of the more ridiculous ones what is it? He, later on in the series he has a sword called the dragon slayer Okay. And it's like a six foot long, four hundred pound sword. Jesus! But I should add, he can swing it with one arm. How? Because he's trained at like from childhood to use swords that are way bigger than he is. Mm-hmm. So like when he's like five, they give him like an actual like normal sword. And then as time wears on, like, the swords just get bigger and bigger. I see. But then it, yeah. get, then it gets to a point where that sword can literally kill ghosts. Wow. Like, it's... it. He's killed so many demons that it... The sword technically exists in two planes of reality. Hmm. So he can just cut through some <laughs> fucking ghosts... I love it. It's dumb, but I love it. Yep, that's my feeling on Beyblade. <laughs> I, I like it. I want it. <laughs> but yeah. That reminds me, in the Beyblade show, like uh, in the in the burst show, I haven't seen much of it, but one clip I did see, there's a scene where, where like, there are these uh, agents, like, after this character. I think his name is Longness. Mm-hmm. But, um, or maybe that's the name of his bay, I can't remember. Um, anyways, uh, the, <laughs> so, he's basically like, oh, I have no time for you. So he just hand spins his Beyblade by, like, casually tossing it. <laughs> and, but he tosses it left rotating. Yeah. And, um, so of course the agents are like, oh, he's playing with us. And he, they just all fire at, like, fire the, their Beyblades at his Beyblade. Wait, are you telling their me Beyblades that are, are you telling me that yeah. their entire law system works off of Beyblades? I don't know. How do you, you're under arrest. <laughs> like, Either, the anyways, as a... As I was saying, they fire their Beyblades at him, and then, <laughs> since their Beyblades are right spinning, his just keeps spinning faster and faster every time they get hit, because it's mm. spinning left. And I think his Beyblade has, like, rubber around it. Uh-oh. You- oh, wait, no, the ba- I know the Beyblade was El Drago or something, I think that's what it was. But, yeah, <laughs> when he throws the Beyblade, it just... <laughs> It just keeps getting faster and faster, and eventually a fucking demon bursts out of it and just torches everyone. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> man, it's that, silly, but I love it. Man, that Beyblade's going really fast. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that's like what Beyblade is, though, in the anime. Like, they just have like weird monsters in them that go whenever they spin fast enough. I mean, isn't that the thing for most, like, battle game 
shows. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm gonna use holograms, even though they can hurt us somehow. Hol holograms. No, no, they can't hurt them <clears throat> in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like... Unless it's like a magical playing field, which has happened in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. The holograms themselves don't hurt. It's just, uh... I think there was like one card that was like a magic card. So like, whenever, uh... Like, when, when they played that, like, their, their, uh, their life points were linked to their actual life energy. Oh, Christ. And, uh, and there was, like, one situation where, uh, Yugi was, like, dueling this guy, and there was a fucking saw blade oh. connected to, connected to their life points, and the closer <clears throat> the saw blade got to them, the closer, the, like, lower their life points were. Oh, or other way around, lower life points, closer saw blade. So are, are of course you? Course in the American, of course in the American dub, it was a, uh, it it would send them to the shadow realm. But in the Japanese dub, the shadow realm wasn't a thing. They just st straight up fucking died. Well, no, there's still a shadow realm. Hell. <laughs> well, like, I I went back recently and I watched the first episode of the original series of Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. And it, that episode tries so hard to just stack the deck against Kaiba. Because mm -hmm. it's like, shit, I'm losing. Then his little brother runs out. He's like, are you winning, Kaiba? I'm like, fucking really? <laughs> <laughs> out of all the people that could have shown up to give him support, it's like the person who would be the most crushed. Yeah. It's. Just, uh, Were you watching the American dub or the Japanese? Uh, I think the American dub? Mm. Because I, I, in I like the voice In Japan, actually. there's a whole season of Yu-Gi-Oh! that never aired in America. Uh. It's called Season Zero, and it has... I think it's only... The Duel Monsters card game is only briefly mentioned. <laughs> like... I... I like... I, I want to start watching more TV shows... Because mm -hmm. lately I've just been watching, like, YouTube videos. Same. But, like, I I love shows that really try, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like recently I watched that Punisher series on Netflix. Yeah. And it's pretty damn good, because you can tell people who are working on it actually wanted to be there. Mmm. <laughs> and so... Yeah. Everybody's given, you know, a hundred percent. That's really cool. John Barenthal consistently scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> consistently. I imagine. So, uh, what, um, what was your topic? Oh, I, w I was wanting to discuss microtransactions. <laughs> but, 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 I wanted to discuss certain points where they might be acceptable. Okay, not, that, that sounds fair. Not totally forgiven, but like, like the kind of thing where you see it and you're like, yeah, alright. Mm -hmm. You're not as angry, you're just kind of like, eh, fucking sure. Yeah. Like, I think microtransactions, and loot boxes for that matter, are complete nonsense when it comes to gaining a power-up, or a weapon, or, like, just any general item that isn't purely cosmetic. I think even cosmetic is a little much sometimes. Well, like... From a loot box. If, it, if, it's, if it's a microtransaction, then whatever. But if, like, or if you, like, you can buy, like, the costume you want as a microtransaction, but you have a chance of getting it in a loot box, I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But if, if it's like Overwatch, where you can only get stuff in a loot box, I'm like, fuck you. Well, well, I've, I've put this point down time and time again, but I, I like how Grand Theft Auto V does their microtransactions. Yeah. Where all the DLC and all the clothes from those DLCs are readily available, and you can buy them at any point in time, as long as you actually have the money for them. Mm -hmm. You just take your character and go to the clothing store and, you know, pick up the clothes. But the only 
type of microtransaction that they have is by using real money to buy in-game money. But that's I'm fine with that. Yeah, but that's that's it. And but this is also in a system where it's actually really easy to gain money. <laughs> oh yeah. And I I can kind of get behind that as like if you have money to toss around and you're like, "Man, I really want to buy this really cool house." Whatever, I'll just buy fucking shark card. Mm -hmm. But like, I think it's complete nonsense when loot boxes and DLC are used for cosmetic items like armor pieces or gun skins. I think it is bullshit when games lock off colors for armor and guns. Yeah, yeah. Destiny 2, I'm looking at you. Warframe. Hmm. Warframe, you have to buy entire car color palette packs. I know. But, like, I understand. See, Warframe system of getting the new Warframes, I kind of like that. Where it takes a lot of work and a lot of grinding to get the new Warframe. Because Apparently they've to toned down the grinding a bit since the early days, though. Well, sure, but it's like... It... it I... It, oh, shit, I knocked my headphones off my head there for a second. But... <laughs> it, it has this... This air of, like... Kind of like what Halo 3 did for armor. Where you're not... Purchasing the armor, per se. You're earning it. Yeah. So... If you see somebody with that armor piece, or with that Warframe, you're like, shit, you must have had to do something to get that thing. Oh, yeah. But, like... Like, I know... Doom... Doom 2016 did that for their multiplayer, where they lock off uh, colors for armor. Yeah. Like, like locking off armor pieces, I can kind of understand that you get by leveling up and you can get, you know, in-game, like, coins and shit. Mm -hmm. I'm down with that. I can work with that. But then it's like, why can't I be bright pink out of the gate? What if... Yeah, I, what, that, is, what that, if I, that is a good point. What if I want to, you know, invade hell looking stylish? <laughs> What if I want to look fly as fuck, yo? <laughs> what? If I want to look fly as fuck in the ninth circle? <laughs> but like, yeah. But like, I I wish games would go back to that where you have to earn certain mm -hmm. things. Like, I'm even kind of okay with locking certain things off at levels. Yeah, that's fine. Like, you can't use this gun unless you're level 50 or whatever. Yeah. Although there are cer certain systems where that that prospect is entirely ruined. Mm -hmm. Like in Borderlands. I, I, I will remember that until the day I die. I When I played Borderlands 2 for the first time, I finished it with a buddy of mine who was like level 60-something. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like level 20. And we beat the final boss, and all the guns, the really cool, really interesting guns, fall from the heavens. And he's like, oh man, look at all these. And I can't pick up a single one of them. Wow. Because I'm completely out-leveled. Wow. And so it's like all the... All, because what it does is it scales the level to the person with the highest level. Yeah, yeah. And so, it's like, oh, look at these level 60 guns. These would do a ton of damage. And I'm like, yeah, I wish I could have it. Mm -hmm. It's great. I love it. Looks looks great, Todd. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Todd. <laughs> Actually, in this case, it would be Randy. Randy Pitchford. Thanks Fuck a lot, Randy. <laughs> it's great, Randy. Fuck you. <laughs> Dude, I... I recently started watching that video game high school show. I don't know what that is. Good. Good. <laughs> it's such a 
brutal misrepresentation of anybody who plays video games. Wow. It is... Oh my god. Like... Sure, the game... The show looks nice, but there are things... There are rules that they are like actively ignoring... Hmm. And I'd be okay with certain parts of it, you know, if this sh the show were set in the future, but it's not. <laughs> it's huh. not. Not at all. But, mm -hmm. so let me describe at least how they play video games. They, ha okay. they have this shitty looking mouse that's way too big. <laughs> and it has like fucking, like, six buttons on both sides. Yeah. Wow. And it's, But it's not connected to anything. And then the keyboard that they're using is, like, this half-pad thing, so it's only, like, WASD in all those. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that wouldn't be that egregious, because I know, like, pl like, Sony did that with that weird, like, PC-esque rip-off thing for PS4. Mm -hmm. Great, now I have hiccups. Um, <laughs> there we go, fixed it. Um, Good. Then, like, I, that wouldn't be that egregious, because I can see those kind of existing. But, mm -hmm. but then, there's the monitors that they're using, which, A, aren't plugged in, oh. and B, they're essentially sheets of plexiglass on a stand, that you can see through. Huh. Like, you, they, they show this, like... There's several scenes where a character's like, Yeah, I'm playing the game! I gotta do this! And then the camera will pan behind the screen, and you can see their face through the, the monitor. It's so dumb. They're like, alright, that's not how that works, but cool! Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. What the hell is this future shit? And then, again, I wouldn't mind, but there's no computer tower... Mm -hmm. There's no computer tower, and the monitors are so thin that it is physically impossible for there to be, like, a art pre-built-in computer for that. Yeah. So what the fuck are they playing it on? The, the real answer is, they're not. <laughs> they just aren't. <laughs> and, like, the, the, the competitive game that they play, or at least the main character plays... Also, it's really weird that the um, most of the the characters that are in that high school uh, live almost exclusively by their screen name. Huh. So, like, the main character's name is like Brian D, but his in-game character's name is actually Brian D. But that, okay. but then there's this one character who actually uses his real name, but it doesn't make any fucking sense in the context. Yeah. And then... So the game that they play is this weird mishmash of Call of Duty and Battlefield. Like, kind of like just your generic military shooter. Yeah. And they play... Like... So, the, the scenes in which they're playing the game are acted out as if the people are in the game. Hmm. So it's the characters in army fatigues with guns shooting at each other, and then when they get that's, hit, and, and when they that's kind of cool. It, it would be, it would be. I thought it was interesting until they fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, like if they if they obeyed the rules of like any conventional shooter, I can be down with that. But the first time that the main character meets what would essentially become the villain the villain character of that series he goes AFK which is represented in game by him standing there staring blankly off into space right yeah which i can get that i can get behind that then the asshole mm -hmm. character is like i'm going to do a trick shot so i'm like okay it's going to be probably some you know whatever 360 no scope I can get behind that too, but he's like, no, I'm going to balance a grenade on his head, and then I'm going to shoot, like, walk away and shoot behind me and try to shoot the grenade. 
That's just dumb. And I'm like, I'm rolling it through my head. I'm like, in what fucking game are you ever able to do that? Actually, in the game, it, Tuna Flumen. In Counter Strike 1.6, there was a glitch where you could do that. <laughs> but just. It, uh, and then, like, there's this really odd, like, subsection of different games that people like, but it's weirdly, like, certain people are, like, ostracized for being in those groups. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a group of people who really like this facsimile of uh, Mario Kart. Just yeah. kind of your generic kart racer type of deal. Yeah. And But they're treated as, like, the evil, mean group. Why? That, that their, their club is in the basement of the school and they all wear leather jackets. Why? I don't know. And then, like... Like, like FPS training is, like, actual military training. Why? So they're like, you're gonna eat a good meal, and then we're gonna train. We're gonna train for hours. And it's like, that's not... What are you doing? <laughs> Why? Go home, TV show. You're drunk. Exactly. And, but, it, but it's even b- more bizarre, because they pull in actors, like, well-known actors... That, like, there was a moment where three actors show up in one scene that I was screaming at the TV because of it. <laughs> Not screaming in anger, more like disbelief that they would take this project. <laughs> like, I can't remember one of the three, but one of them is one of my personal fucking heroes, and I don't know why the fuck he was there. <laughs> Bruce Campbell? No, even worse. <laughs> Who? So, first one I saw was Chris Hardwick. Okay. Which is, like, blew me out of the fucking water. I'm like, Chris, what are you doing here? Get off the TV. Who's he again? He's Thor, right? No, that's uh, Chris Hemsworth. All right. Chris, Who's he again? Chris Hardwick uh, did the show The Soup. Haven't seen that. Um, this is also replaced by another guy, but, um, uh, he was, he's part of that Talking Dead Thing that comes on after Walking Dead I can't remember like I'm actually blanking on everything else he's in but I know him from several things mm-hmm. but then well, that's fine that's fine but then fucking Stan Lee shows up Stan Lee and like like I was already blown out of the water at like Chris Hardwick and then the other like lady that showed up and I'm like like, Stan Lee showed up, and my wife saw me, and I pointed at the screen, and I'm like, What the hell are you doing here, Stan? Get off the TV! <laughs> Why? Why, Stan? <laughs> Why? I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? What? But it's just, it... It's such a rough, like... Like, I'm... I wouldn't say I'm old, old school. I'm more like, like, Half-Life 1 era yeah. type type of guy. Mm-hmm. And that, that show, I don't know how, like, it, it makes, it hurts, make, or it makes my chest hurt when I watch it. Oh. It's just like, I look at it and I'm like, fuck, people actually like this. I can't believe... Like, I understand why certain people would like it, but I don't understand why most people (laughs) would like it. Yeah. It's just... I don't don't get it. Mm -hmm. And, like... I don't know. What's weird is, like... I just don't know! I don't know! Well, it's weird, because, like that and there's no actor consistency what so like i i just finished season one recently then getting into season two you can clearly tell they waited like a year before making that yeah because there was a character in season one who was heavy set not super heavy but like just kind of just chubby i'd say husky yeah 
<laughs> but then in this new season, he's like all ripped. Why? But then, but it, the show is acting like it's been like a month. Why? Exactly. And I almost didn't recognize him. Like, did they get a fucking new actor for that guy? Like, oh wait, wait a minute. <laughs> the, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> But, like, the thing that kills me is, like, you can tell certain actors are having a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. Like, um, oh, shit, what's his name? Uh, the guy from Epic Meal Time. Oh, uh, I don't know his name either. Was it Harley or something? But he's... I don't remember. He's the principal of the school. Huh. But I, I will admit, I actually like how his character's written. Because mm-hmm. he's just an asshole. <laughs> like, just a real <laughs> piece of shit to everybody. Mm-hmm. And, like, he has this deadpan to him. Yeah. So, like, every time they're like, yeah, we did it! He's like, yeah, whatever. He's like, <laughs> he's like holding a cup of coffee. He's like, fucking whatever, dude. Yeah, you did, I guess. Oh, look, you won. How does this affect me? How does this affect me? Congrats, you ass. Oh, I... It's just... I... I don't get it. I don't... Like, the more I think about it, like, the more... Not, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I were to go on Netflix now, that show isn't there. Hmm. Like, I'm kind of afraid that I imagined it. <laughs> well, like, I... <clears throat> oh, that would be a good topic. What? So, I, I know this is a hard, like, hard left turn drifting into a light post. Like, okay. Like, transition. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, but what kind of scary movies do you like? Um, I like scary movies with a sense of humor about themselves. <coughs> I like those too. I I've gotten kind of tired of the the ghost scary movies mm-hmm. because they they always kind of turn into the same thing. It's you know some family like we're not alone in this house. Then somebody gets picked up and thrown across the room or something. Yeah. Or there's a a a eerily skinny woman standing in the corner making a face at the camera. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't watch many scary movies, to be brutally honest. Which is weird because Evil Dead Two is my favorite movie. Yeah. Well, I I'm like crinkling shit in my microphone right now, but um. That's fine. But like, what I really like is. It, it's not a thing that I want exclusively, but if he, if a scary movie is able to make me uncomfortable, that's a winner in my book. Mm. Beca- like Evil Dead 1? Yeah, like, it. it's... I, I hate jump scares. They do nothing mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. It's just a loud noise followed by a spooky face that when you go back it isn't even that fucking spooky. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, I just, I jumped. Sure, sure, I've jumped, but it's, I'm not scared. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, uh, fuck you. <laughs> and, and, like, arguably, that's what the, the, uh, the now cursed Five Nights at Freddy's series does, is that yeah. the, the scariest part about that entire game isn't the jump scares, it's the anticipation. Yeah. So, like, you're looking at... The, like, the moment that's the scariest is looking at the cameras. Yeah. So, like, they're getting closer and you're like, shit. And I like that. I like that. that I feel like playing on that anticipation is good. Mm-hmm. Know what I mean? But, but if you're just relying on the jump scare itself, fuck you. Mm, that, yeah, but then it's followed by a loud s- screeching scream from the fucking animatronics and ugh. Yeah. Well, like, I, like, there, there's a, a, a scary movie that I watched recently that is uncomfortable from minute one to the end. It? That, that too, 
But there was another one that I saw called The Invitation. The Invitation. Not heard of that one. And I thought it was going to be some sort of drama, film, whatever's like, you know, oh, you know, why did you cheat on me, this, that, and the other thing. But it it starts off like that, and I thought that's where the movie was going to go. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm all for dramatic movies. I like a good thriller once once in a while. Yeah. But then it turns into this, un, like, like, the minute it starts to become that, like, you just see, like, just increasingly uncomfortable shit. Yeah. And it's not like, oh, otherworldly, like, horror. It's like, like, the, the, the main character is unreliable. He, he's, he's not a narrator. There's no narration. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. he's completely unreliable as a main character. What do you mean? It, like... It's questionable if he's, like, not... It's not like, oh, there's a killer in the house. It's like, are you even, like, processing what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing inadvertently horrifying happening. It's just he's such an asshole, and he's kind of unstable that he's either misprocessing information or not processing it at all. Wow. Wow. And, like, there's a moment where, like, he, he's he's taking his girlfriend, his new girlfriend, to his ex-wife's house for a, a get-together, right? Mm-hmm. And when he arrives, his ex-wife is re- has remarried, and they appear to be part of some sort of cult. Oh. They, but they, 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 they divorced because um, their son had died due to an accident... Mm-hmm. Like, completely out of either of their control. But yeah. the father blames himself because... So so his son got taken out by a baseball bat. Ooh. Like, that sounds worse than it is. But, like, mm-hmm. it's like the kid's birthday party. And they're playing, like, they have swords and stuff. Yeah. And, like, one kid's using a stick and the other has, like, a, like a small, like, aluminum baseball bat. And then the mm-hmm. kid gets fucking rocked across the head with it accidentally, and then it just takes the kid out, and the, yeah. and then the dad's like, "I gave him the baseball bat, so I think it's on me." And mm-hmm. I'm like, "Okay, I can actually see where somebody would blame themselves for that." Yeah. But then it becomes this weird topic of like, they've clearly haven't talked about it since it happened. Mm-hmm. Like, like. Like, it seems like they both went into de- denial after it happened. And, yeah. and then they split up, and they're back together, and he's trying to talk about it throughout the entirety of the movie. Like, he's he's not, like, overtly trying to bring it up, but he's, like, like just the right amount of awkward that that would be. Hmm. It's like, yeah, so, um... Do, do, what do we do? What Do, do you want to talk about this? Yeah. But then... They, they try to do this weird, like, they, tr- like, it's not like they're o- overtly trying to indoctrinate the guests into, into the cult, but it's, she, like, she, before she got into the cult was a wreck, I mean, and like an emotional wreck. Yeah. And so when he goes back to the house for this dinner party, she is all smiles like, happy as happy can be, acts like nothing even happened. Huh. Like, she, she's like, I've let, learned to let go of sadness. Like, sad, like, I think it was like, sadness is just a reflex or something. Mm-hmm. And then when somebody try, like, doesn't try to on purpose make her sad, but it brings, they bring up something that makes her upset, and she just slaps the shit out of the guy. Oh. Yeah, but it's like the like it comes out of nowhere, and but that whole movie is just like I simultaneously wanted to see how it ends and also wanted the movie to be over. <laughs> like I'm like this is really weird, and I'm I'm like watching this alone, and I'm still looking around the room like if somebody walks in here, 
like, like either something's going to come up in the movie that's going to be really hard to explain, or like I'm going to have to explain it to them. Yeah. But I I highly recommend it. But I I love any like like the the invitation. Like, the original Evil Dead, even, like, Evil Dead 2, which is more funny than anything, Mm -hmm. still makes me uncomfortable to certain degrees. Well, the the laughing uh, antelope scene, or not, is it an antelope? I can't remember. The laughing deer, that's what it was. Yeah, then the laughing... That is, like, the most uncomfortable thing. (laughs) Well, like, I I think that that scene starts off kind of funny, but then when he starts screaming... Yeah. I'm like, oh, fuck... (laughs) Mm-hmm. But then there's like that whole scene when he's in the cellar that yeah. that gets me. Yeah. Like the not the first time, but the second time when he has yeah, where he, he's with the chainsaw arm. Yeah, when he has to go all the way into the back in the, of the cellar. Mm-hmm. It's just like oh. Also, the scene with um. Oh shit! What's her name? Linda. Yeah, I was gonna say Linda. When she's like dancing. Yeah, that, that shit's uncomfortable. <laughs> well, like... And also, it's it's a staple of Sam Raimi movies. He does it even in, like... Even in action movies. There's this thing that he does where he'll... Put... The frame... On an object that is either going to move, be picked up, or fall over. And, mm-hmm. and it is the center of focus. It's right in the middle of the frame... And right when it gets picked up, knocked over, or anything, it the camera jumps, like jump zooms into it. Hmm. And you can see it a lot in like Spider Man. I haven't seen it much. I I I mean I can't barely remember Spider Man. Is what I mean. It's it's good. I I, I like the first two, but there there's a moment like in Spider Man Two when like shit's going wrong and a window breaks. But the camera suddenly zooms into the window. I'm like, that's a fucking Sam Raimi shot. I know that. I see you there. I know that shot. <laughs> and I, I also like the idea that... I don't like the idea, but I think it's funny that Sam Raimi kind of half tortures his actors. Does he? Yeah, like um, like Evil Dead 2, when Ash gets pulled out of the house and he's flying through the forest... Yeah. That's a sped up shot of Sam Raimi and Ted Raimi beating Bruce Campbell with branches sped up. Oh, really? Yeah, they're standing on either side just whipping him with sticks. God. It, and, like... But, like, the lengths he goes for, like, the stupidest shit is really funny. Yeah. Like, in Spider-Man 2, there's a scene where Spider-Man kind of loses his powers. It's this weird... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and there's a moment where he drops all of his books because he's become a regular nerd, like in most movies. Mm -hmm. And he leans down to pick it up, and a guy with a backpack walks by and, like, just slams his backpack into the side of his head. And I didn't... I didn't realize it before because I didn't know Sam Raimi did that sort of thing because I was really young when mm-hmm. Spider-Man 2 came out. Yeah. But I was watching, like, after I'd listened to the Evil Dead 2 commentary where he's like, yeah, they, he's just hitting me with branches. <laughs> like, Bruce mm-hmm. Campbell's like, he, they're just beating my ass with branches. And <laughs> then you watch, like, the bloopers for Spider- Spider-Man 2 and it's playing that scene. And right when the the backpack connects with Tobey Maguire's head, the words Sam Raimi with an arrow pointing up (laughs) appear. (laughs) And it's just like, like, I, the shit he puts his actors through, but it's weird because he only does it to, like, actors he really likes or he's friends with. He only does it to actors he know will deal with it. Yeah, so, like, Bruce Campbell, his own brother, Ted Raimi, Mm-hmm. Like Toby Maguire, I hear Toby Maguire is actually a really nice guy. Toby Maguire is really nice, but I, I, you know that scene. There's a movie he was in where he plays like a veteran. I can't remember. I. It was a really good scene. Like, even out of context of the entire movie, it's a really good scene. <laughs> like he's just like going all out and he's like screaming and throwing shit. 
And, hmm. like, that alone makes me scared of Tobey Maguire. Because, <laughs> like, I think he'd start off nice, but then you say one thing wrong and he just fucking snaps. Yeah, he looks like a docile motherfucker, but then he just fucking snaps. Starts throwing shit at my head or something. But, mm -hmm. but like, I, I want... If, if it makes sense, I want Sam Raimi to do more scary movies. Yeah. I don't, I, but specifically, I don't want him to do sequels. Mm-hmm, like original stuff. Yeah, like, like, Drag Me to Hell. That was a really good one. Yeah, I've been meaning to watch that. But if, if you like Evil Dead 2 and the feeling that you get from that, you'll love Drag Me to Hell. Okay. Because it is uncomfortable and gross and horrifying, but then there are moments where it's like a macabre kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And the uh, was it the uh, the Delta makes an appearance. Huh, the Oldsmobile. Mm -hmm. And was that in Spider Man? Isn't that what Uncle Ben drove? Yep. Well, it's funny because my my dad picked that out like. I think when the first Spider-Man movie came out, because my my dad's a huge Evil Dead fan, and he, and he we were watching Spider-Man together. And he's like, "Oh, look, it's Ash's car." I'm like, "What does that mean?" Because I hadn't seen Evil Dead yet. I was just like, "What? Yeah, what's that? What's going on? What's what's, what's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, it's funny because like, I if I ever have a kid, I want. The, I want the same kind of experience that I had with my dad watching scary movies. Where mm -hmm. where he was like, I'll watch a scary movie, but he's like policing what I can see. Yeah. So like, like, like Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, as, as, I haven't seen that, but... As far as horror movies go, that's a pretty tame horror movie. I've heard. But there's like one and a half sex scenes in that movie. Ah. Uh, so, like, when I originally saw it, my dad just kind of calmly put his hand over my eyes. <laughs> just like, hold on, scene's almost over. And then it cuts away, he's like, and you're good. <laughs> but, like, he pulled his hand away just in time to see the one guy get, like, snapped in half. I'm like, oh, that's horrific. Mm-hmm. God, I, I, I know people don't like Freddy vs. Jason, but I really like Freddy vs. Jason. I need to read Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. Oh, it's good. But then there's that one comic where it's like Jason vs. Jason X. Really? Yeah, it's like this weird comic where like like the um, the normal Jason is like fighting the weird future Jason. Huh. And I don't understand it, but they're like tearing each other apart. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting to look at, but um, I I want I well actually nowadays I think it's at a pretty good point where like really weird characters are showing up in different spots. Yeah. Like like uh like Jason in Mortal Kombat X. Mm -hmm. <coughs> or um, now all we need is Ash in Mortal Kombat X. Please add Ash to he, Mortal Kombat. He he would like there couldn't be a better character. I know. Well, I mean, there is that one game that's one large copyright claim, essentially. I know. I've heard of that. And I want to play it. I want it. Like, I like it. I want it. He, <laughs> I'm not one. <coughs> God damn. I'm not one for a, a scary movie remakes. But I want a remake with with the way that special effects are nowadays. I want a remake of The Reanimator. I don't know what that is. The Reanimator is like just gross. It but the thing is how do I explain it? It's a gross, 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 scary movie. But it has really interesting and really cool concepts. Hmm. And the guy who plays Herbert West, um, like the main doctor character, is yeah. he's played by um, 
I'm trying. Have you ever seen the uh, Frighteners? No. Um, I'm trying to think of the other stuff he is in. Well, a anywho, he plays a fantastic Herbert West because he, he fits the character to a T. Mm hmm. <laughs> like, I couldn't see Herbert West as any other type of character where he's really isolated. He's, yeah. he's creepy, but it, like almost like he doesn't mean to be. Yeah. Like, he's so wrapped up in his work that it becomes creepy. Yeah. And he 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 develops this the serum called it's called the reagent, mm -hmm. and what it does is it kind of brings life back to dead tissue. Huh. And like the whole movie starts with him accidentally reanimating his his own professor at school. Mm-hmm. And they're like, they're like. What have you done? You've killed him. He's like, no, I gave him life. And it, as the guy's, like, freaking out. Because mm. when you come back, sure you came back, but it's not totally clear if your mind came back with you. Yeah. And so you're just kind of nuts for a few. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, there there was a scene where he, he moves into an apartment with a with a medical student. <coughs> God damn. <coughs> on. There we go. But he moves into an apartment with a medical student and he the medical student has a cat. And Yeah. And one night uh uh the medical student and his girlfriend come home and they have a mini fridge in their room. And they open the fridge and there's the cat. <laughs> and the cat's dead and it's in a bag and the guy flips out at Herbert West and he's like, what the hell, man? You killed my cat. And Herbert West just goes, give me a minute. I'll explain everything. Come down to the basement with me. I'll solve all of this. Huh. And so he goes to, down to the basement with him, and he's like, he's like, if you don't fix this, I'm gonna call the cops. And he's like, just, he's like, just give me a minute, and he pulls out a huge syringe that has, like, a glowing green fluid in it. Mm -hmm. And, like, he, like, injects the cat, and the cat comes back. But oh. it's, like, rabid. Oh. So... So, like, it starts off, like, looking normal. It's like, oh, look, it's back. Then, like, like, hi like <laughs> dives into a bunch of boxes. And they're like, shit, we gotta kill it again. <laughs> so there's, like, a five-minute scene where they're both, like, holding shovels trying to find the cat. <laughs> but it... Yeah, that sounds cool. It, it's a weird-ass movie, and I only found out recently that there's, like, a bunch of sequels. Huh. Where it's, like... Well, like, the first one kind of ends on this kind of, <coughs> this, um, weird-ass note, mm -hmm. where it's kind of implied that, like, Herbert West has been murdered, and then, like, like, her, like, the medical doctor, like, the medical student's girlfriend got, like, stabbed or something, and brings her back, and then that's how the movie ends. Mm. But she's nuts. And then it's like, the next movie is like, don't worry, you survived. Mm -mm. <coughs> well, we've been going for about an hour, just so you know. I mean, how long do you want this to go? It's up to you. Uh, do you want me to edit this, or do you want you to edit this? Because it's going on your channel. I, I can edit it. I got it. You got it. <laughs> I like uh, up to you whether we stop now, or we just keep going. I... I don't know. I feel like we've covered a lot. Yeah. I'll just cut it off, like, here. Okay. See you guys. See you later.